On our previous show, we understood that sins, a person was born in sin because inside of him there is the evil inclination that constantly directs him to exploit others. How does a person decide on what to do? It's dictated by his own nature. He didn't create himself. He didn't program himself in any special way. He didn't design himself. And therefore, we can see it on children, even on babies, little children, the way they grow up. We see that each of them has a nature of their own. They don't choose the family they're born in what society to develop in, and therefore, when he reaches the age of adulthood, then how can we demand of that person to be good or bad? He can say, go to the craftsman who made me. You made me this way, and therefore, how can you demand me today not to be a criminal? I was born in some criminal neighborhood, I don't know, somewhere in the downtown area. And then what do you want from me? This is how I was born. I got all my values from them, such and such values, and why didn't you care about me earlier? when I didn't know where I am, you caused me to be there. Or at least, you didn't help me to get out of there. You didn't take me to some other place. So this is who I am. And today, who am I? Today I killed someone. I stole something. So for me, it's natural after the way I was brought up. So why am I to blame? Why are you saying that I committed a crime? Maybe the state, society committed a crime, and not me. So here you're saying something very interesting. Because what if the environment that I grew up in appreciates criminals and violence, suppose? Yeah. But I also understood that even if I grow up in an excellent environment, very moral, with excellent values, still there is some kind of an evil inclination inside of me that wants to use others. Of course, that goes without saying. People are born better, worse with natural inclinations. Meaning that a person that grows up in a good qualitative environment, still there is this thing inside of me that's causing me to sin. And what is that? It's my desire to use others for my own benefit. This is actually the sin. Yes. Now, on this show, we'd like to focus on punishment. We really fear punishments. Now, punishment is a very diverse thing, the way an ordinary person sees it. There is the punishment that comes from society, meaning that society punishes you. And there is punishment that, so to speak, comes from God, because you don't know when will it come, how will it come, where will it catch you. And also, many times we give different interpretations to things. If suppose, God forbid, there's an illness or an accident or something, immediately you start thinking, okay, what did I do wrong? Maybe I've sinned, maybe something. According to what you said before, then the question is, where did I do something good? It's as if I always deserve to be punished. Yeah, it's something that's around us all the time. So maybe the most basic question that I, as a person, would like to understand, does God punish us? I'm not familiar with this concept. No? Meaning God doesn't punish? I don't want to talk about the concept of God, because the way I look at it, it's a system, and it's not someone sitting in the sky that decides whether he wants to punish you or not. Okay, suppose there is a system of laws and rules, so does it punish me if... I do something that goes against the rules, the laws of the system. If we're talking about a system, can a system punish? So what does being punished from heaven mean? Very simple. A person 
that did something wrong, he has to be corrected. A correction, not punishment, but correction. Yeah? And therefore he gets this correction. He's being taken through different states that he actually caused himself with respect to this general system. And he feels that it's punishment. This is what he thinks, that it's punishment. But it's not punishment, it's correction. Okay, what's the difference between punishment and correction? I put my hand in the fire. I got burned. Is this punishment or not? No. Why not? Because there is a system of laws here. This is exactly how all of nature works. It's a system of laws. Okay. Sometimes a person experiences certain states in life as a punishment because he doesn't know. Because he applies his own personal feelings to nature. He thinks that this is how everything behaves. But actually, were he to see how he's built, he'd see that he is working according to unbreachable laws, according to a very simple system of laws, and that there's nothing here that has to do with wanting to do one thing or another, but everything functions in a very precise way, meaning it's all very systematic. Of course, there's the beginning and the end of creation. There's the state from which we begin and the state that we have to reach. We have to achieve complete, unconditional love between everyone. And therefore, there's no punishment here, but only correction. Okay, so let's speak about the correction. For example, I know that in the Torah, there are places where it talks about divine punishment, and there is something that's called karet. And both of these are considered as some kind of a correction. It doesn't matter how we call these things. Maybe we don't understand these things, or our viewers don't, or you don't. Let's simply say that a person performs different actions that he can do in a better way. He does them in a worse way. So in order to compensate for it, there is some pressure put on him. It's intended in order to teach him how to perform these actions in a better way. That's it. Meaning there is no punishment, but only correction. OK, I understand that there is a correction. Only what I'm trying to understand are different concepts mentioned in the Jewish Torah. I don't want to get into it. We're talking about this based on what? Based on you recalling something that you read someplace? No. I don't want to talk about it based on that. Let's talk about more realistic things that are closer to us. So there are no punishments, but only correction. And also there's no kapara, no expiation. Because what is expiation? Atonement. That I did something bad, and Maimonides explains that it's a process where a person confesses to doing it, promises that he won't do it again, and then the matter is atoned. It's also a correction. What did you just say? That I've acknowledged that what I did is a sin, that by this I caused harm to a person, to humanity, to nature, by my ego, and therefore now, what does it mean that I admit to doing it? I have to examine what was I supposed to do good? What harm did I do instead of it? What is the harm that I did? And now, how can I compensate for it? That's called kapara, atonement, to compensate for it. Okay, suppose I'm a rational person and I understand that probably I'm sinning and doing wrong. Everyone is, all the time. Okay, is there a way to 
avoid, I understand that the correction has to happen, so there's no way to avoid the correction itself or the pain that comes with the correction. No. The correction has to happen just like every sin has to happen. Does it always have to be painful? I was corrected. I feel pain. Wait a second, I don't exactly understand. You asked several questions on the way here. What are you asking? I'm asking, talking about punishments. I know that when I'm punished, it's not pleasant. The correction, too. So, your entire life, you're getting punishments. Right, because you're not aware that you're sinning all the time. Is there any way to avoid it somehow or feel it as something a bit more pleasant? No, no, no. It's not about pleasant or not. There's a way to avoid all of these transgressions, which is to meet the condition of love another as thyself as quickly as possible in all of your actions. Okay, so if I say, yes, I acknowledge that I have the evil inclination, there's hatred and there's love. And where are you in between the two? Correspondingly, you can see how much you have sinned, how wrong you were, and how much you have to compensate for it. All life long, all the time, we're doing wrong because we're not directed at reaching love and other as thyself. We're not directed at connecting with other people in a good and nice way, and therefore we're transgressing all the time. And this is why our life is so hard, because we're constantly getting small punishments all the time, all the time. We never feel good. The states in which we receive small punishments, we already consider that as something good. Until, as it says, a person dies without achieving half of what he wanted.